Okay, so chapter seven um, is like an exper expanded, expanded. Um, it is an expanded. What do you call it? Um, I guess expanded information on chapter five. Chapter five is where we looked at, you know, the TCP IP model of network communications. So chapter seven has some repetition and then some new things because it's mostly about the OSI model in chapter seven. So you wanna open up your textbook and we can move forward with chapter seven. So a lot of things there are certainly gonna be familiar to you because we've talked about them already. And then some new things that are unique to the OSI model. So. Uh, bottom line, the IEEE is uh, the standards organizations, right, that manages the networking standards. So IEEE um, is your Institute of uh, Electrical and Electronics Engineers. So that's your... OSI model. Now, let me say this right off, uh, right uh, as we start that the OSI model sometimes can be very confusing. And here's why I say it can be very confusing. So, Dennis, when you look at this OSI model here, where does your data start getting processed? It starts where and then goes in what direction? You know what I mean? Um, starts in the top and goes to the bottom. So what's the top? Because now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you have application presentation, blah, blah, blah. So which is the top? I would say by the numbers or what? I would say application. So seven there is the first, not one. Mm -hmm. Well, you're right. But the way it's all, the way it's, I guess the way it's, uh, the graphics, the way it's drawn, the way it's laid out, sometimes can be confusing to you because it's like, if application is the first, then the numbers should be flipped around, right? Application should be one instead of seven. Because if you look at it, it looks like it's backwards. See what I mean? Right. So... Maybe you want to just ignore these numbers to your left and just know that application at the very top is the first. Like we looked at when we talked about the um, when we talked about the TCP model, your applications you start from the application layer where you have data, then transport layer where you have segment and datagram, internet network access. Now on the OSI model to the left here. Application is the first because you're dealing with your, you know, email application, FTP application, you know, your web browser for HTTP and stuff like that. So you always start at the application layer. And then you go next to the so application, presentation, session, transport. So you, go, you need to, let me just say, memorize this, this particular one, because um, it's important to know exactly how it is stacked. Sometimes some of you guys come up with acronyms for, um, you know, the APSTNDP. There are all kinds of acronyms you can find to make it easy to remember what's first, what's second, third, fourth, fifth, and all that. Uh, here's, a, here's a YouTube um, clip that might be uh, helpful here. So let me put in the chat for you guys. You always want to use this resources. Um, helpful. So here we go. So you want to just maybe bookmark that YouTube video. It uh, gives you some more 
you know, info about what we're going to be talking about. Okay, let's keep going. So, uh, the application layer there is just, this is like a summary to allow access to network resources. So you want to, you want to go, you know, basically when we say you want to go online, you want to get something done, you want to transfer some files to FTP. So you're going to pull up your, um, you're going to, you want to do an FTP transfer, you're going to pull up your FTP program, something like that. Uh, what am I doing here? All right, you're gonna pull up your FTP program, something like that. So you want you want to you know you want to kind of access a network resource. So you pull up your program, whatever it is, and the application layer. That's the first. They got the presentation layer, which is um, responsible for encryption and things like that. The session layer there establishes a session. During that session, you're logged into the system and you have all kinds of permissions to do stuff while you're in that session. Your transport layer is what helps you to um, transport the, the message uh, using TCP or UDP uh, protocols, the reliable or unreliable you know, uh, protocols. Then you're coming down the line, you get to your network layer where you start grabbing you know, IP addresses and stuff like that. Then you go to the data link layer where you grab your MAC address and a few things. And the final layer at the bottom is your physical layer where it's gonna go out through your medium, maybe cable, fiber optic, um, wireless, whatever it is. That's your last layer there. All right, so let's get into Let's see here. I should, so let's just go straight up to, okay, let me go here, let's see. Okay, let me use this, let me, let's look at this, this page here. So uh, each layer in the OSI model has its own set of well-defined functions, which we're going to see. Just like the TCP IP model, right? Every layer has a job to do. Uh, so again, like I said, you've got to know that the transport, the for example, the transport layer is comes right after the session layer before the network. You've got to know that the presentation comes right after application, but before session, things like that and they all have specific jobs to do. Kind of like similar to what the TCP IP model does, maybe in a more expanded version. Uh, and this is the more expanded version here. So let me make that a little bit bigger. So the same protocols that work on the application layer here in the TCP model, FTP, HTTP, DNS, and all that also uh, you can have that same, the same protocols on the OSI model, uh, working on the application, presentation, and session layer. Then the transport is the same on both sides. Internet work is same on both sides. Uh, network access layer, same on both sides. So uh, let's see some details here. So a practical example of how you might find the various layers in operation. You're gonna see this diagram in your assignment and even in your final exam. So let's see what this diagram is. Um, actually, let me ask a question. Uh, Jerry, let me go back to you. Where do we find this window? Uh, so you go into control panel and then you uh, open up advanced settings in the network. <clears throat> right here. Yep, and then you just click on uh, internet. I click on internet? Yeah. Like that? Uh, right click, right click, my bad. Uh, properties. Okay, that's it. All right, so that's that same window there. Well, uh, this thing's in my way. So let me kind of move this out of the way a little bit here and get that window again. 
All right, so this is the same window here. All right, so if you're trying to, you're gonna see this question, um, basically what it's gonna ask you is to identify the different items in your ethernet properties that might tell you, you know, what, which of these properties, you know, represents or which of these properties works at a certain layer in the OSI model, right? So, so right here, the first one here, it points to this top part here, right? And this arrow here, if you guys can see that, says that's your physical and data link layers, right? That's because uh, this information, Amy, question for you. This information here is for what this tells us about what? The MAC address. The MAC address. And we get the MAC address from where? What's the device? Amy, are you still there? Oh, yeah, sorry. I was on mute. Um, from the uh, Realtek. So Realtek is what? What is Realtek? Is the name for what? Not sure. Amy, what's going on? Talk to me. Uh, is it the name for the MAC address? I think Realtek is the brand of the the controller, right? Say that again? Is it the brand of the controller? What controller? For this this PCI. What this, PCI? This, this component. This component. What's the name? What's the name? What's the regular name we call it? A network card. Exactly. I mean, you guys should be so familiar with that stuff now. You can't be saying, I don't think you should be saying at this point, I don't know what that is. Harvey, you there? Yes. So you're familiar with this? What Realtek is? On this, oh, on this, I... in this picture here, this is uh, Intel. So, you know what that is, right? Yes, that's a company. So this company, so this arrow here is pointing to information about your network card. Intel is the company that make this particular one here. On this side, you have Railtech. You can have all kinds of NIC cards from all kinds of companies. So right here is your NIC card. And when you hover, you see your MAC address, all part of your NIC card. All right, so that information about the NIC card, that is an example of your physical and data link layers because you're getting your MAC address. On the link layer, which is right here on the link layer, that is where you get your MAC address. So in the, in the OSI model, the link layer is responsible for generating your MAC address. You know, with, with, with your, uh, whatchamacallit, with your network interface card. All right, so that's what the link, so if you saw that image there, that's what it's referring to is Here's an example. So if you saw this arrow without the label, then you need to know what, how to label that. This is the physical and data link layers. Now we go down to this section here, which is the client for Microsoft Networks. Uh, Koa, do you, you know what that refers to, client for Microsoft Networks? This arrow here says that gives us uh, a clue of the session presentation and application layers. So you got any idea of what client for Microsoft Networks is about, Core? Core, where are you? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you have a question? Yeah, I do. So what's client for Microsoft Networks? I think it's a like a. Oh my God, I forgot if it's a. The 
just try. I mean, just say whatever comes, whatever you think it is. Cool, isn't it part of the? Uh, isn't it part of the uh, the network? The neck. I'm talking about client for Microsoft Networks. Oh, well, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Tell me something. You were going to say something. You didn't complete your sentence. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason why you're quiet? Uh, I have no clue. What is that? All right. So my my computer is a Windows computer. What that basically means is my computer is going to function um, based on Windows or Microsoft protocols. So if I'm going to print from this computer, it's going to be determined by my Microsoft computer, my PC, my Microsoft operating system, Windows operating system, right? Uh, if I'm going to whatever, what, basically whatever I do on this computer is all dependent on my operating system, right? I can, all my networking and stuff like that is all controlled or based off of Microsoft system. That's what, that's just what it means there. So client for Microsoft networks uh, refers to the fact to every application I'm going to use, every application that I'm going to use on this system is all controlled by basically my system is a client, and that client operates on Microsoft system. That's what basically that is. So that line there uh, points you to, or the description, shall I say, both lines actually, the client for Microsoft Networks and file and printer sharing, Microsoft Networks. Basically, it's telling you that your whole setup is all a Microsoft setup, right? So... A lot of things that your computer does is specific to your operating system. If your operating system is a Mac or Linux, it's going to operate differently. So mine operates based on Microsoft system. So right here, your client for Microsoft networks and your file and printer sharing, they're all application layer um, items on your system. The next two at the bottom there, well, right here, it's, I gotta go scroll down a little bit. Uh, IP addresses. IP addresses uh, will be part of your network and transport layers, right? So the internet address protocol, TCP IP version four and version six, all function at the network and transport layer. So if you saw this diagram without the descriptions, then that's gonna, this will help you know what exactly you're pointing to. The first one there is pointing to your NIC card. Your NIC card generates uh, MAC addresses so you know, where, you know where on the OSI model it stands. Your printing, uh, printing and stuff like that, file sharing, those are all applications. And your IP addresses are all network layer items. That's what that is. Okay. Let's keep going. So, again, uh, the way your the way the uh, layers work, they work. They are all connected together, right? The application needs the the presentation. The presentation needs the application. The application 
processes the information, sends it down to presentation. They don't work independently. You can't go for application and jump all the way down to physical. You've got to go through. They all work. Um, you know, they all collaborate, if you want to say that, right, in collaboration with each other, one after the other. So application does this thing, sends it to presentation, does this thing, session transport, and keeps going. So they, they are constantly in communication. So it's, uh, it's like peer communication between the layers. Everyone knows what everyone is doing, so to speak. Okay. So now we've talked about client and client and servers, right? The client um, request and the server grants the request, right? And so if you were to look at two computers here, say computer A is the client and computer B is your server, uh, or say, or let's just say this way, computer A is the sending computer and computer B is the receiving computer, right? Now you can see, uh, I don't want you guys to get confused here, but simultaneously on both computers, they have similar functionality on both computers. So in a sense, if I send, if I send from computer A, actually, this is not, this is probably not going to give you the description I'm looking for. Uh, let me see if I can get another diagram here. Because what, what, what typically happens is, let me see how it's explained in the book here. Maybe that will help. Yeah. What typically happens is computer A processes from application, presentation, sessions, transport, like top to bottom. And then, when it, and then it comes this way, if you can see my arrow, and it goes, so it goes from computer A from top to bottom to the physical, and when it goes over to computer B, it goes from the physical, right? It starts processing that information uh, kind of like in the reverse way, in the reverse way, right? So a computer A, I mean, you go to your, for example, you go to your email, you compose an email, you send the email, it goes through the various systems, and it goes out of your, obviously leaves your computer, leaves your network and goes you know, out on the internet. And let's say your friend receives your email. Now, how do they receive that email? They receive that email because it comes in through the medium. So if you're on your desktop or you're on your laptop or something, it comes in from the physical layer and it works its way up. And then all you do is you open up your computer and you can read the email. So it's kind of like a reverse, a little bit sort of reverse, right? When you initially compose the email, you compose it. So you start out at the application layer, right? And then you send it, and then it goes down the line. And then when you send it off, it, it gets reversed in a sense. So two computers that are communicating, they have the same kind of layers, but maybe you can say that the process is a bit reversed you know, depending on who is sending and who is receiving. Uh, Fong, does that make sense? Where's Fong? Why do we have people here who are not responding? Fong, where are you at? What of Justin? Are you guys all hearing me? Or have I cut off from everybody, actually? No, I hear you. No, we can hear you. Uh, so... There are two people here, Fong and Justin, who are not responding. What's going on? They're part of this class, right? Or oh, are they intruders? So why don't people respond? Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to remove anybody who doesn't respond to me. Should I do that? 
What do you guys think? Should I do that? Uh, I'll probably just give them a minute. Um, they might just like go to the bathroom or something. Both both of them went to the bathroom at the same time. Okay, let's wait a minute. We already we already waited a minute anyway, so. What of um, Jen Lin? Jen Lin here. All right, so that's the third person I'm calling out on, and there's no response. What up, Zara? I'm right here. So why is three people in your class not responding to me? Zara, tell me. I'm not sure. Maybe they went to the bathroom. Oh. That's a serious coincidence. Three people going to the bathroom at the same time. We've hardly started the class. Now we're not even doing anything because people are not responding. Whatever. This doesn't help. Okay, let's try again. Fong or Justin or Jen Lin, are you guys here? I'm just... Oh. This is who? Justin. So, Justin, did you go to the bathroom? Uh, yeah, actually. Jeraldine, did you go to the bathroom? Uh, no, actually, I took, uh, I got a, I got a foot delivery. I didn't hear what you said. Say that again. I got a foot delivery. You got a foot delivery? No, I, I said, I got a foot delivery. So, I just pick up my foot. Okay, he what a Fong. Food delivery. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. What a Fong. What a Fong. Okay, I'm going to try Fong again later. Uh, Michael, let's go to you because, you know, we're not, this class is not flowing right now. I'm sorry, did you just call me? Who? Who did I call? Fong. So where have you been, Fong? I've been waiting I for just, you for like two minutes. I just went to the bathroom. I'm sorry. Oh, you went to the bathroom. Yeah. Okay. Is that something about today that everybody's like, is this bathroom break? Do you guys all do the bathroom break right now? Like, let's just take 10 minutes. Everybody go to the bathroom. You guys want to do that? Yeah, sure. Nobody wants to go to the bathroom? I was dying to go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um... Yeah, I'll wait for 10 minutes. You guys can go to the bathroom. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, let's get this started again at 110. Maybe you, you guys want to do that because, you know, I don't understand. It's a very short class. Why you don't I... do your bathroom stuff before we start the class and then we have the class, right? Yeah. Uh... I mean, you know, I don't get it. So maybe you guys should just go off and I'll come back right. at one ten. Um, How about that? All right, Professor, let's just continue. It's all right. Well, when I call somebody, I need people to respond. You know, I don't like to talk to myself. So I need people to respond. You know, I need to know you're here. And then we're having a conversation. I can just record this class and you guys can just watch the recording. Maybe that's better. So we don't waste each other's time, right? So now I don't even know what I was talking about. So what was the question? I forgot. So anybody help me out? What was the question? Anyone who was paying attention, what was the question I was we're trying to ask? Uh, we just uh, we just finished up talking about how the uh, the layers go from a top down, then get rebuilt from the bottom up. Um, uh, anyway, let's go. On. I don't remember my question. Let's just keep going. So. Uh, let's see where we at. Yeah, this class is not flowing today, so I'm just going to do my best because you guys are not helping me out today. Uh, where are we at? So page 353. There's a word there that's called the... Um, well, let's start with the word encapsulation first. It's a big word right here, encapsulation. 
So what does encapsulation mean? Encapsulation, the idea behind that word, and you're going to see that word a few times in your assignment, but let's see how we can describe the word encapsulation. So here, let's go here and say, um, oh, I didn't type that right. Letter with envelope. Okay, let's go here. So let's see. All right, let's, this might be a good image here to use. All right, so uh, let's go back. Let me go back to you, Michael. Now, I don't know if you've written a letter lately, but hopefully you know how letters and envelopes work, right, with stamps yeah. and everything. So let's say you're talking to a preschooler, right, and you're trying to explain, you know, how you write a letter, put in an envelope, and then go put in the post up or go put in the mail, right? Mm -hmm. So you say to this preschooler, this is the first thing you do. What's the first thing you do when you want to write a letter, you know, the whole process? You need what? The first thing. Uh, first thing, you need to address it properly. Address what? Uh, address uh, where it's going and where it's coming from. What's the where? Where what? Oh, on the, uh, on the envelope. You oh, should. so the first thing you do with the whole process is you grab an envelope and you address the envelope. Okay, so okay. we do that with the envelope. But sure. let's let's go back a few steps. How about the letter itself? You need okay. paper, right? Oh yeah, for sure. You make the product. You make you make what you write whatever letter you need to address it to dear dear so and so. Okay. And then you have your body. You sign it. So we have our letter. All right, so when we're done with writing the letter and everything, you know, dear grandma, uh, send me candy this Christmas, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what I want. Now, what do you do with the letter? Uh, you uh, fold it up so it can fit in the envelope. Put it in the envelope. You fold it, you fold it up so it can fit in the envelope. Mm -hmm. All right. So what happens when it gets in? So after you put in the envelope, what's next? Uh, you seal it. You seal it? How uh, do you seal it? The old fashioned uh, way? <laughs> the old fashioned way, yeah. <laughs> like the, uh, the sticky parts, way. make it closed. Okay. okay. Now, when you've put in the envelope, and now you have your, say you have your envelope right there, something like that, that's your envelope. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You flip it around, and how do you address the envelope? You put, you put the address and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right where it's going in the middle and right where it's coming from uh, at the top left. And okay, stamp, so of it kind, of, kind of looks like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, you see all that process you just described, uh, Michael? You grab the paper, you write the letter, you fold up the letter, you grab the envelope, you put in the envelope, you seal the envelope, you address the envelope, you put the stamps. All that process on the networking side is what we call encapsulation, believe it or not. So when your data is being processed, right? You go to the application layer, you go to your, maybe your, I don't know, HTTP, you go to your browser, for example, right? You want to go to, who knows, umb.edu, or you want to go to ESPN, or you want to go to Facebook, whatever you want to go to in your browser, you type in the address in your browser, your browser take that, takes, that, takes that address, goes on the back end through DHCP, sorry, through DNS, you know, looks for the IP address, finds you the website, goes through the whole process, right? That whole process where that information, when you Start is referred to as data, and then it goes down the line, it becomes a segment or a datagram, it goes down the line, it becomes a packet, it goes down the line, it becomes a frame, and then it goes out of your network. That's all called encapsulation, when you package the information and send it out, just like your letter to your grandma asking for a Christmas present of whatever it is, right? Yeah. All that is called encapsulation. And we see that information on page 353, just at the very top section there. Right? Like it says, 
In the mail delivery analogy, the sender must put the letter into an envelope and address the envelope. Encapsulation. So, like I said, uh, right here on the left side, so that's you on computer A, where you, you know, all your data is processed, application, presentation, session, transport, network, data, physical, you're done and boom, it goes out of your network and now goes to your, per, you know, your friend or your professor or whoever it is, whatever it is you're doing on the other end anyway, and it gets processed on that end, in the, mm. kind of like in the reverse. Now, Brooke, what do we call the reverse process? The first process is encapsulation. What's the reverse process called? Uh, is it de-encapsulation? You're brilliant. Did you know that, Brooke? Brilliant. Uh, because some people tell me, I don't know what that is. That's, that's what it is. It's right there. So being able to see information and say, well, that has to be it. Um, the first part there is encapsulation. And when you, so, you, so when we go back to what Michael just described, right? Uh, Brooke, let me stay with you. When we go back to what Michael just described. So imagine grandma gets this letter. So what does grandma do, Brooke, when she gets this envelope in the mail? Uh, she would look at who it's from and open the letter. Exactly. She's going to do the exact opposite, right? The exact opposite of what Michael did. Yeah. She goes to the mail, takes the letter or the envelope, right? Opens it up, takes the letter out of the envelope, opens up the letter and reads it. So it's the, it's, it's the exact kind of like the exact opposite of what the sender did. The sender grabs the letter, writes it, puts it in the envelope. The receiver grabs the envelope, opens it up, brings out the letter, reads it, reverse. So encapsulation is the first process. De-encapsulation, like Brooke just told us, is the reverse process. Right? Going so... On the left side, computer A, that's where you have encapsulation happening. Computer A sends it off to computer B. Computer B de-encapsulates it. Okay? Don't get confused by those terms, that, but that's what, that's what it's describing there. Okay, so again, we've seen uh, details of the application layer. I don't think I need to spend too much time on the application layer. Uh, a presentation layer we haven't talked about much. Presentation layer handles formatting uh, when you format the data and translation. M one of the important things that happens at the presentation layer, uh, I'm not seeing it here in this PowerPoint, but if I go into the book, uh, presentation layer on page 354, uh, it gives us some more details there. If you look in the second paragraph, let me see. If you look in the second, like the second big paragraph, uh, like kind of towards the end of it, it says, um, as another example, a web browser that connects to a secure web server with encryption protocols must encrypt data before it's transferred to the server and decrypt data arriving from the web server. This too is a presentation layer function. So I, you know, I just wanna bring up things that might, you know, might be more, I guess, relevant to you. So right here, uh, you know, even on this UMass Boston page, you can see that this page, right, uh, is secure. Obviously we're on a secure site. If we look at more information, uh, you guys might not be able to see this, so let me magnify it. Magnifier. So you can see right here that it says the page you're viewing was encrypted before being transmitted over the internet. So we know that uh, UMass Boston site 
is encrypted. And so what it's telling us here is, let me read that part again on page 354. It says, a web browser that connects to a secure web server with encryption protocols must encrypt the data before it is transmitted or transferred to the server and decrypt the data before arriving or when it's arriving from the web server. So web server, between the web server and the um, actual, uh, what to say here? Between the web server and the browser, right, they have, there's an ongoing communication to make sure that the data is encrypted and then when it gets to the other end of the server, it gets decrypted. So there's that stuff happening between web browser and the server. So your data is not going to pass, pass through the web browser and go to your server if it's, on, if it's not encrypted, right? All that is taken care of on the back end with the right protocols. So you're sure that whatever communication you're having or exchange of information is encrypted. And the server has the tools to decrypt the data, to be able to read the data. It makes no sense for you to receive information that you can't process. So all the protocols work to make sure that that information is processed the way it should be processed and consumed the way it should be consumed. You know, when I say consumed, used, you know, made useful. Now, to you as a, you know, to regular users like you and I, everything just looks like it works. I go to a web server, everything, you know, I go to my browser, I put in the web, I put in Facebook, it opens up Facebook. It's like, hey, it just works like magic. It, it's not magic. It's set up, it works because it's set up to work the way it works. And so part of our duty and our job is to, um, you know, more and more know these things, how they work, right? There are vendors whose job it is to make sure that encryption tools and encryption software are made available. For example, you can see that right here, my, uh, my antivirus right, is Kaspersky, right? My, my, oh, let me get out of this, of this um, magnifier here. So if I pulled up my, uh, where's it right here? Can I find it? My Kaspersky. Where is it? K-A-S, all right, here. So here's my antivirus here, right? See, I've got a risk here. It's always some, um, what you call false positives. Anyway, but so your web, so your web browser, right? Along with tools like antivirus and stuff like that, right? All work to make sure that in you know, all these different protocols, um, they all work at different la layers of the different protocols to ensure that your data goes from point A to point B successfully. And if there's encryption, the encryption is applied. So things have to be set up that way. So you might end up in, I mean, IT is very, it's quite vast, right? For example, we looked at the, um, we looked at the, the NIC card. I mean, you might end up working with real tech or working with Intel, you know, building NIC cards. That is one aspect of the OSI model. That might be your job one day, right? That might be your job. So all the different tools that we employ in IT, um, you know, the point is to get data from point A to point B in a way that follows protocol. So an important aspect of your presentation layer, if that question comes up, is encryption. Encryption takes place at the you know, the encryption and decryption of data all happen on the presentation layer. So, uh, Brooke, let me go back to you. So you see that very last paragraph there in that uh, page 354, 
the kind of problems you might see at the presentation layer? Yeah. Can you read that out to us? Yeah. Possible problems at this layer include incompatible or missing translation software in which the presentation layer on one system doesn't have the necessary decryption, decompression, graphics processing, or data translation software to interpret received data correctly. So, Brooke, if I email you and I email you, um, you know, an encrypted file, let's say for security reasons, I'm like, okay, Brooke, I'm going to send this to you. It's encrypted. Mm -hmm. Now you need to, on your end, through your email uh, provider, you need to have the tools to decrypt that data so you can read the information, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you're not so concerned about the, you know, encryption. You just want to read the message, like what's in there. But if you don't have the tools, then you, it's useless to you. So, so one of the problems, uh, so to speak, that you might find on the presentation layer is, you know, uh, devices or programs or, you know, whatever system that we use, not having the right tools I mean, in this case, to decrypt, like it says, to process some graphics, you know, to read the message. That might, so if you see those kind of options in an assignment, those are problems that are going to come up, and they're all attached to the presentation layer, right? Um, you know, not having proper presentation, sorry, not having proper decryption tools or even encryption tools, right? Every layer has its own problems. Uh, back to the application layer, actually. The kind of problems we're going to see on the application layer, it's right there on that same page at the very top. It says missing or misconfigured client or server software, right? So things like, you know, maybe your operating system is, you know, like maybe I'm using, you know, Windows 7 and it's outdated. There's no update for my Windows 7. Well, that's, that's a problem because that application cannot function. If I'm trying to, you know, do some file transfer, for example, and maybe I need to update the software, if I don't do that, it's not going to work. Right here it says new version available. So those are application layer problems. If your application is not well updated and stuff like that, it's not going to work. You're going to have problems. So it says using, um, you know, old or obsolete programs, Obsolete commands, stuff like that, might be problems between the client and the server. He says also that there is a. Um, it says a transport layer application layer protocols that use a connectionless transport layer protocol are susceptible to network disruptions. Right, for some reason you just can't connect. You know, so. So it's a good idea to be familiar with some of the problems that are, should I say, related to specific layers. So any problem you have with software, you know, with applications that you use on your computer, on your phone, those are application software, you know, problems. And more specifically for product for presentation layer, well, we just, um, looked at it. So for short, it says that the presentation layer, its job is to make sure that it presents data in a suitable format, right? That's its job. You know, whatever conversion that needs to be done, is done on that layer there. All right. Now the session layer, that might be more obvious to you, just the way it sounds. Um, so you're looking at you're looking at things like log in and log off. When you log into the system, like right now, you are, I guess, logged into this Zoom session. So you're a part of the session. While you're in session, um, some of your information might be recorded. I mean, your name is recorded. Uh, some transactions might be recorded. Um, in fact, every transaction will be recorded while you're in session. You know, it's like you're leaving a footprint while you're in session. Well, that's the job of the session layer, right? To ensure that I say it manages the 
mechanics of ongoing conversations such as identifying which site can transmit data when and for how long. Sometimes your session might be tight, might have an expiry, you know, like maybe you, it's going to log you off after a few minutes, you know, 20 minutes, or, you know, if you're idle for three minutes, it's going to log you off. All that stuff happens at the uh, session layer. Uh, right here, the second, ID, second item here says, this layer handles communication setup ahead of data transfers and session tear down when the session ends. So that's what we call log off. Once you log off and your log off is successful, all your communication with that website ceases or ends. If, I, if you log off this, um, this Zoom session, then you're gone from it. Everything shuts down or everything ends. There is no more communication between your system and the Zoom session. That session is over. Uh, if we look at the book, let's see. So it says um, DNS and on page 355, DNS and other name resolution protocols work um, on the session layer as do log on, log off functions. And most uh, authentication protocols built into most client software, such as FTP, you know, and all that kind of stuff, right? All that happens. Now, the kind of problems that you might have on that layer, so the very last line there, uh, Brandon, the very last line there says um, checkpointing. So that word checkpointing, this might be kind of familiar to you maybe um, if I pull this up here and say, let's see, video stream. Um, let's see. Let's, let's see if this is a good one here. What I'm looking for is when a, I mean, I don't know if you've experienced that. Okay, actually, let me do this. Maybe this will work. Yeah, so when you're, yeah, I guess this might be, this might be a more, maybe more proper. You're watching a, a clip or a movie or something, and have you guys noticed, uh, Brandon, when maybe you're watching, I don't know, some clip, and the words, right, and uh, the pictures are not in sync. Ever seen something like that? Yeah, when it's like m the lips are moving, but the words come after or something like that. Exactly. So what it says here, Brandon, about that on that page 355, it calls it, uh, it says checkpointing, right? Checkpointing. That's what is in this PowerPoint, right? Because, right? you know, it always helps to make sense of some of these words. Because if you don't make sense of it, you're just going to be like, oh, just, just jargon. So I like it to be relevant to you guys. So that word checkpointing, it says right there in the book, checkpointing is a synchronization process between two related streams of data, such as audio and video streams in a web conferencing application. The session layer keeps the audio in sync with the video. So if, you're not, if you don't know a lot about what happens on the session layer, you got to kind of remember that, okay, if I saw that in an assignment or something, the session layer keeps the audio and video right in sync. So there's no lag, you know, there's no, not, not the lag actually, just the fact that, you know, like you said, the, the lips are moving, the picture is just, it's like, there's a few seconds delay. The whole thing is not in sync. So, all the different functionality that you're going to find on the network, on the session layer, 
uh, is responsible for making sure that a session, you know, that you're in session, a session um, is established. Communication is going back and forth. In fact, it says one thing here. It says um, uh, the fourth point here manages the mechanics of ongoing conversations such as identifying which site can transmit data when and for how long. So if there's some kind of imbalance, right, maybe this site is transmitting and, you know, there's some imbalance, then you're going to have that out of sync thing happening. Maybe the voice is going too fast, you know, faster than the pictures, or the pictures are too slow, then, you know, this, it's all out of sync. So obviously, vendors who design or produce those kind of tools and equipment have to do a good job, right? So when you watch, so when you watch movies, things don't just happen automatically. When everything works normally, the tools, the right tools are doing their job. The right people have set the right thing up. So nothing just happens automatically. Something has been set up and it's working how it was designed to work. So you may not have heard know this before, but but when every time you watch a movie now, you should appreciate the fact that the session layer is doing a good job, and the right tools have been put in place to make sure that you know everything is in sync. And the more technology, you know, the more uh, technology grows, then things are things are able to perform better. People have you know, the better tools and better equipment that can do all this kind of work, right? So that's an important thing to note at that layer there. Like I said, we've talked about a lot of stuff um, about uh, the OSI model from the TCP IP model. So this is more of a review and shouldn't be all completely new to you. All right, we'll go to the next. Well, the next layer is a transport layer, again, which we've talked about, but let's look at a few things here. So, uh, transport layer is responsible for breaking data down into smaller chunks called segments, right? I think the example we used was, uh, what, puzzles? Look at puzzles, right? Yep, so you have, you know, a whole big puzzle and imagine all the pieces of the puzzle, you know, in little bits and pieces. Now, this might be a whole big bo puzzle board, but it's, you know, no matter how huge this puzzle is, if you can get all the pieces to fit, that you can put the whole picture back together. So in a sense, when we talk about the transport layer, the transport layer's job, right, um, the data might be too big. And his job is to break it down into smaller chunks. And eventually, like it says at the bottom here, it handles resequencing. That is, no matter how big the data is, all broken up into little pieces for transportation, it can it goes it goes to what you call resequencing. In a sense, it's like every piece of that data has a number, a sequence number, and all you need to do is you know put all the numbers together and get everything back to how it was. Right, kind of like um, uh, you guys you guys familiar with the story of Humpty Dumpty? Did I spell that right? Yeah, that's how you that's spell it. Right. So you guys know the story, right, Justin? Yeah. What happened to Humpty Dumpty? Uh, he fell off a wall. And what happened? He, he broke and I'm pretty sure he died, but... Uh, <laughs> did he die? <laughs> I, oh, he I did. don't remember if he died or not. I thought they tried to put him back together or something. I don't remember. I just knew he fell down the wall. Uh, I want to say if an egg was... A person and they fell. I think they would die. They tr um, the, uh, all the king's men had to put him back together, but we never know if he actually, you know, 
they successfully they actually got them together right got so, together. Together. so that's so... where the rhyme ends so like it's kind of a it's kind of dark you know it's like a cliffhanger <laughs> deep yeah it's not a good thing when the movie ends on a dark note right i mean you yeah, always I, want I, the good guys to win yeah i, I don't know like if we're going to know the answer but maybe he deserved it anyway Anyway, so the idea is, well, unlike Humpty Dumpty, who, you know, we don't know if they were able to put Humpty Dumpty back together, um, the transport layer, right, uh, puts everything back together, no matter how many pieces. So the, so the transport is easier when it's, it's broken down into smaller chunks. It calls segments, all right? Um, it says also here, segmenting data is important because every network technology has a MTU, a maximum frame size. Basically, you know, there are little chunks that can be transported. So you've got to make it, you know, everything has to go into a certain small package, a certain size, the maximum transmission unit. You know, how large or how small it should be when it's been transported. All right. So again, like I said, handles resequencing segments into the original data only. So when you get your you get your email or you get your movie or you get whatever it was you are transferring or you, the website, you get to the website, it's not all broken up into many thousand pieces. It looks like one complete website, right? But when that data is being processed, it may not, when you request the website originally, it may not, it certainly doesn't come as one huge, you know, one huge piece of data. You got to split it up, right? You got to split it up, and you know it's kind of like I think I've used the example before. Uh, let's see. So is our, let's say you know, you were talking to, I don't know, you sort of met an alien, one day. And the alien was like, hey, human, what is this? What is our? Right here. And you say, this is like lunch. So the alien says to you, what do you do with this lunch? What do you say to the alien? You eat it. Says, okay, well, how, how do you do that? What do you mean eat? How do you eat this lunch? Can you tell me, whole oh, oh human? <laughs> you use a fork, you scoop it, and then you put it in your mouth. You, it says what? You use a what? A fork, a fork, a fork or a spoon. Yeah. And then you scoop, okay. Um, you scoop it, and then you so it says it so. Oh, human, you use a fork or a spoon. <laughs> That's like some kind of piece of metal or plastic, right? <laughs> Yeah. Then you say, okay, well, what does that look like? You say, okay, I'm going to show you what a spoon is. Yeah. So here's a spoon. Say, okay, alien, you probably have never seen, but this is what a spoon is like. Okay, you're going to put that stuff in your mouth? Yeah. Say, yeah. So you got to take that spoon, you stick it in this, but the alien says, oh, human, why do you need a spoon? Just put the whole food in your mouth like one time. <laughs> You're gonna choke. You're gonna choke. Say, alien. You have no. You guys have no sense. You don't do that. Let me teach you how humans do it. You <laughs> use the spoon, right? Yeah. You pick up the food a little at a time so you don't choke. Mm -hmm. He says, "What do you mean choke?" He says, "Do you have any schools up there in alien land?" <laughs> <laughs> Choke means you die eventually. You like, you know, the food gets stuck in your throat. Mm -hmm. So, well, all that drama, right, is our, I was just to explain what you mean by flow control. You've got to send the data, just like, so when you're eating, right, you got the food in your mouth a little at a time, a little at a time, a little at a time until you're done. Yeah. If you don't, you're going to end up in the bathroom for the whole day or in the hospital. So that's how, we, that's how it is with data. 
it's got to be broken down into little chunks and transmitted again like the example of the puzzle little chunks it's all called flow control and all that happens at the transport layer right flow control very important flow control uh, is, we also have things like the source and destination port numbers all that information is needed by the transport layer to get your data to where it's supposed to go. Uh, so very important, very, 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 very important um, idea there. So hopefully the next time you see food, you start thinking about aliens or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap it up there. We actually might have ended this chapter today. Day, but I'm not going to rush it. We'll take up. We'll take the rest. Uh, we'll finish up the rest on on Thursday. Okay. On that very alien note, let me um, stop sharing and let's do the attendance. Let's see if you guys have any questions.